This video is for junior high history, the highlights from pages 269 to 267. We're looking at Mexico and Central America now. So page 269, just under where it says Middle America, highlight Mexico, Central America, and the West Indies are often called Middle America. Under Latin America, highlight Canada and the United States are called Anglo America. And then just a little bit farther down, highlight the part of the New World that lies south of the United States is called Latin America. So Canada and the United States are called Anglo-America because Anglo is kind of another word for English. That's because English is the main language of these countries. And then the rest of the Western Hemisphere, the rest of it that lies south of the United States, is called Latin America because the main language down there is Spanish and uh, other languages like Portuguese that come from uh, Latin. Uh, another thing there is that Roman Catholicism is prevalent in Latin America because of the Spanish and Portuguese influence, and Protestantism prevails in Canada and the US because of the English influence. Turning to page 270, under early Indian civilizations, highlight the Aztecs. A little bit further down, highlight the early Aztecs settled in central and southern Mexico. And then highlight the underlined portion. By the 1400s, they had established a powerful empire. So you're going to want to know where they settled, central and southern Mexico, and that they had a powerful empire. On page 271, under Spanish Discovery, highlights Spanish explorers discovered Mexico in 1517. Keep highlighting. The Spanish explorer, Hernando Cortes, sailed to Mexico in 1519 to find gold and silver. An interesting thing here is that he actually disobeyed orders to do this. He went directly against the orders of the, um, the Spanish governor who had sent him. And his idea was basically, if I find enough gold, then I'll get pardoned because uh, that's what the Spanish were really after, was gold. And he ended up uh, being so successful in his conquest that he, um, he just continued on and he never returned to the governor who had originally sent him. Uh, a little bit under where it has the bold name Montezuma highlight the Spanish conquered Montezuma and the Aztecs. Now the Aztecs, um, they, were, they were pretty violent people. They liked to do human sacrifices. Um, when they waged war uh, against other Indian tribes, they would um, deliberately not kill their enemies in order to keep them, uh, to sacrifice them to their gods. So that made a lot of tribes around them not like them. So as uh, Cortez traveled, he came in contact with a lot of these tribes who were willing to help him uh, conquer the Aztecs. So um, the, the Aztecs' own cruelty brought about uh, a lot of their demise here. Under mountains, plains, and plateau, highlights just under that uh, Mexico little bit further down, this is underlined, highlight two large peninsulas and then highlight the names for them, Baja California and the Yucatan Peninsula. You'll want to know the names of these two peninsulas that are part of Mexico. Just under that, highlight Mexico stretches along the southern border of the United States for 1,833 miles. Highlight the Rio Grande, or the Great River, forms this part of the border. Turning to page 272, under the Spanish language, highlight this bold term, Romance from Roman Languages. And then on the second column, highlight Castilian Spanish, the standard form of Spanish. And draw a line connecting that down to Romance languages. 
on page 273 at Land of Mountains highlight Mexico is one of the most mountainous countries in the world. And then highlight the names of the two main mountain ranges here. Highlight the Sierra Madre Occidental. And that means the western mountain range. Occidental uh, means western. And then highlight the Sierra Madre Oriental. And Oriental just means uh, eastern. Turning to page 274, under natural resources, highlight Mexico leads the world in the mining and producing of silver. And then highlight petroleum is one of Mexico's greatest natural resources. On page 275, highlight at cities, Mexico City, the capital of Mexico. You are going to want to know the capital there. Under um, our box there on Paracutin, on the first column, towards the end of that last paragraph there, Highlight, in the middle of his flat cornfield, rose a volcanic cone about 30 feet tall. In the middle of his flat cornfield rose a volcanic cone about 30 feet tall. And then on the second column towards the end, highlight, the world came to know the volcano as uh, Pericutin. Kind of funny, the, um, the Indians of the area, the Ter uh, Tarascan Indians, call it El Monstruo, the monster. And if you check out the picture there, you can see it kind of, kind of is a, a monster. It swallowed up two entire villages before it was uh, conquered. And uh, the picture there shows um, all that's left of one of the villages. That's the church spire completely buried in hardened lava. So El Monstruo is a pretty accurate name. Turning now to page 276, top of the page, highlight Monterey and highlight that this is the center for Mexico's steel industry. At the bottom of that first column, highlight the bold term sombrero and highlight that it is a tall hat with a wide brim can kind of see an example of it in the picture at the top of the page there. Got those wide brims and the, the tall crowns of the hat there. At Recreation, highlights Mexicans celebrate special events with a fiesta. And then that is the last of our highlights there. Make sure that you answer the questions for comprehension check 15A and 15B. And complete all of your reading. And uh, don't forget that if you do not turn in your Gettysburg Address video by today, it will be uh, a failing grade. Next week is spring break, so it'll be a failing grade if it's not in by then. So if you haven't already sent me that, uh, I've got most of you guys' and they've mostly been uh, really good. So make sure you get that to me if you haven't sent it, and have a great rest of your day, and an awesome spring break.